Welcome to another King's Crusher Chess 24 Blitz Panther. And by the way, it's my birthday today. Yeah, August 28th. I share the same birthday with Grandmaster Daniel King. Bit of trivia. And also, by the way, we've, we've collaborated once on one or two, uh, well, one particular video, Sicilian Night Off Games. If you want to check out my channel on that. So, yeah, my birthday's today. <laughs> so go easy on me. Kaushnay says, perhaps best not to play on your birthday. But we'll find out. Hopefully I can I can win some so games. My birthday's today. Yeah, ah! August 28th. I share the same birthday with Grandmaster Daniel King. Hold on. Trivia. I thought I muted everything. I, c I can't mute enough around here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's take the challenges on. Let's take the challenges. I'm going from the bottom of the list. Night Flight 01. And I'm sweating because it's humid today. It's still humid in the UK. <laughs> okay, so night flight. Night flight, not night flight. <laughs> I keep thinking night flight for some reason. All right, let's 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 start with Smith Mora on my birthday. Smith Mora, even though it might not be entirely great in all the variations. <clears throat> ah, this one's interesting. So the thin chateau, the dreaded. I'm going to blunt that bishop. It's giving me an opportunity to blunt that bishop. Put some pressure. Okay, I see the evil plan. I don't want to allow bishop g4 because I don't want more pressure on d4 than needed with bishop g4, knight f5. I think that's the evil plan of black. That he's waiting for me to play knight f3, then he gets bishop g4, then he gets knight f5. <clears throat> in fact no, I don't think anything I'm wondering if I should do anything special here like g4 we'll just castle into castle I think any f6 he takes a so quick forcing moves by the way when I say check all checks that's an ideal it's an ambition uh, obviously I'm not able to check all checks in a five minute game you can try that ambition in any time control and because we're not computers we're not going to be able to check all checks but I think the advice in general is good it's an ambition it's an ideal uh, so yeah I mean especially when you're not awake it's difficult to actually do that <laughs> you know as human beings we're not that disciplined even though we might have some you know generalizations and and tips it's difficult to apply them uh so anyway uh g4 just kicking that knight is super aggressive and i'm tempted to do that i'm hoping i'm not going to really regret this because i don't want queen b6 later i'm thinking takes an f4 <clears throat> okay this 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 is getting interesting now this knight i'm wondering about this knight this knight's not gonna have too much flight soon if i put a battery on it where is it gonna go is it gonna sack itself on g4 <clears throat> night flight has a knight on the rim a knight on the rim is dim sometimes they say okay so queen d2 this seems sort of logical but i guess i should be concerned about f6 what i really want to be able to do on f6 is play knight d5 and bishop c4 for that i need a rook on c1 as well it would have been nice to have a rook on c1 i can still try and torture this knight maybe queen d2 and knight e5 not d takes knight takes And then I can follow up with f4 after. Because if takes takes them on the on the knight. Okay. I can't con carry on with f4. This is undermining my, my center. Aha. Uh -huh. Am I leaving myself too weak? A bit concerning. Maybe I should play e takes f6 and hope for the best. He's actually encouraged me to create some weaknesses. I don't like this. Yeah, this looks a little bit on the weak side, i got to say. <laughs> These weaknesses. Oh, no. Okay, I've got to somehow cover them up. I don't know. King g2 as a first step. Well, rook c1, as I mentioned, for knight d5 and bishop c4, if ever this knight moves. There might be the possibility of knight d5, bishop c4. 
I'm reinforcing that. Okay, how do I cover these weaknesses up? Mind you, c5 looks tasty for a knight. If I go knight a4 to c5, that might be interesting. Hmm. Hmm. It's possible. I think it's possible without losing a piece or anything to play knight a4. So going into c5 would be fun, I hope. Try and get into the resources of the position. I'm going to have my my deeper stare at the monitor coming up. My deeper stare. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Resources of the position. There's another little tip. Try and focus on the resources of the position. Forget the cameras, etc. Knight c5. So there's knight a6 for rook c6. Knight d4. I'm going to take the rook. I think knight a6 is on. I hope it's on. <clears throat> Resources of the position. All right, I'll play this rook c6. It's a pawn. Can I put some pressure? Or do I drop it back here? Maybe here. I'll try and double. There's knight e4 coming. Oh, I don't like this. This knight e4, this bishop's extending. Maybe I need to take, and hopefully this bishop is not too good. But it is a big concern. This is not ideal. <clears throat> Interesting. Knight e4 takes. Okay, I'm going to take this. Is it taking with the rook? No, okay, that bishop I'm hoping is not a killer at the moment. Although gold f5 is starting to look scary. <clears throat> Can I get a grip on these dark squares? On the bishop f4, there's always e3. Can I get my king off here without getting mated? Can I get my king off here? Actually, then there's knight g2. That could be good. I get my king off this diagonal knight g2 bishop f4 knight e3 plan a bit of prophylaxis there getting a king off because i want to be able to move this bishop without running into something horrible now i, I think i can afford g5 just for the moment i'm hoping f4 is not killer maybe i can just take that okay i lose d4 I really want to get this knight here to reinforce f4. Try and keep the blockade going on f4, maybe even a knight f4 and rook c7. It looks that looks the potentially a nice position. Knight f4, rook c7. Do I kick the queen? Where's this queen going if I kick it just for a moment? I don't want any any pressure built up on b2 or anything. Hmm. I'm light squares. Is that if I get to play knight f4 and rook c5? I think I'm keeping some nice control over the position. Hmm. Can I just take on a5? This is a nuisance queen. I must admit. What is it? What is this queen doing? <laughs> ah, okay. Knight f4, just to keep blockading for a moment. Okay, so there's pressure on d4 and there's pressure on a3. Can I kick the queen with rook c3 or is there a check? Queen c3, I'm going to lose d4. Hmm. All right, let's not spend too long here. I think it is a reasonable possession. Um, some sort of positional sack. I'm not. I'm not sure about this, but I just want to get the queens off. Okay, can I get the queens off? I think a lot of danger will go out if the queens come off, because so my king has been a bit airy earlier. There is knight takes g6 here. Bishop d5. Actually, there's rook d5, queen d5, knight e7 there. 
little tent thing. Let's look at five. Okay, that's ninety-seven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that game. First game. Um, is the webcam Just checking? Everything okay? <clears throat> Everything okay before we carry on? I hope it is. Um. <clears throat> Let's go to the next challenge. Thank you, Night Fight. Thank you. Okay, Aldisto. Let's try. Mm, I have a tendency for King's Engines. Mm, I've had a sort of thing like this before. So I'm going to go for the classic D4 clamp and B5. This two plans play for b5 also try and keep a grip on d4 hopefully without too many issues now knight d4 here just to make sure white's not playing d4 so i still want to play b5 now that the rook's off that diagonal <clears throat> mm, open this one up. Shall I? Mm, it might be a way of. Ah, oh, actually, e5. Not, not trusting e5. g5. Looks a bit scary. There's also bishop e5 to consider. Maybe I should just do this. Try and generate some play with maybe ah, I'm tempted for E5 for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> G5 looks scary, but there's F6. I think G5 maybe I just take on F5 actually. Do I dare take on F5? I think the point is if he plays this knight takes e6 i'm reinforcing the knight on d4 i like the knight on d4 but i'm wondering it's sort of futile to play bishop a6 because it's always b3 is that futile or not hmm. knight e2 is not doing anything i guess there's always knight e2 there's queen h4 is a forcing move here that looks actually quite intriguing it stops queen h6. Yeah, I think this is sort of intriguing. If I'm stopping f6 and queen h6 as an attacking plan, I'm hoping this is not totally, totally ridiculous. If the rook hasn't got an entrance to gain a tempo with rook f3 to h3, then okay let's see if i make sure i can play rook g8 as well this doesn't look too terrifying just yet not too terrifying just yet but and it comes down to finding resources and stuff a lot of the time maybe knight e6 now or oh, there's knight d5 knight d5 maybe bishop b7 first or bishop e6 I am not entirely sure. Maybe I do want to be able to play bishop d5. So knight e6. Intriguing. Knight e6. If knight d5 takes knight f4 after, I think there's tactical ideas somewhere. Let's just check this. 95 immediately though is a pain isn't it i think that's a pain i'm going to take the knight and hope for the best there um try and cause a weakness with b3 it's not really 
doesn't seem to have much point to it at the moment, so I must admit. Is it a bit slow? Okay, am I going to get dumb over? I need to play A4, maybe A5, A4 later. That's, that's one point if I can manage it. Hmm. The knight's coming to e4. And we'll hit d6. That's a point, hit d6. But he's left my knight on d4, that's reassuring. And queen a5 might be dangerous for a7. H5 is always Queen H6, that's the one not to play. Okay, yeah, this this looks looks scary. So I'm overloaded, huh? Can I play a check at knight f4? Well, there's bishop g4 for knight e2 in this position. Bishop g4 for knight e2 is mating. Queen a7, there's still knight e2, it's still dangerous for queen g not queen g3, but I don't think that's what he intended. Let's chat, mate. It's in, it's in the, the devils and details of the position. Yeah, it's it's chat, mate. It's funny, but the queen just left. Weakness of the last move. It just left um, e2. We just left e2 here. This is a classic weakness of the last move. Just leaving, it's a trade-off move because you just left e2, bishop g4 comes apparent. Okay, thanks for the game. Um, thank you guys, all these presents. Remember, also liking the video, yeah, is really appreciated today. I'll treat those as virtual presents if you like this video and stream. So Kramnik student next. So Kramnik has played some wonderful, wonderful games. Our video annotators on the King's Crusher channel. He's sometimes very exciting and dynamic. I know, I know sometimes he's blamed for the Berlin Wall popularity that he used to uh, defeat Kasparov in a match. I think Kasparov wanted to give his crown to Kramnik and didn't really vary his openings too much uh, against Kramnik. So we had loads of Berlin Walls in the Brain Games World Championship match, which I went with my friends to see a couple, a few, two or three of the, of the games live kind of um, quite cramped spectator quarters, but it was fun. Okay, so, um, okay, we got some sort of, uh, I think I can play B5. I've said that enough recently about this position from the games of the 60s I've been looking at. I'm hoping B5 is possible for E5, Bishop B7. So we've got a Fischer Sozin attack. Now, I've been corrected about this as well. I said for some reason Sozin, it's actually Fischer Sozin because he really did carve out the features of Bishop C4 as a system against the Sicilian. Do I have time for B4 here? This is critical because I really want to fight for D5 and E4. I don't want to play E5 without a fight because he's still got his pieces locked on central squares. Now e5 here with this knight on the rim. This is looking like Fisher Tau 1959, which ended well for Tau. Because <laughs> we've got a nice battery. We've got nice pressure. And the, if, if I'm following the theme of that game, bishop c6 and queen b7, beautiful battery by Tau. I mean, queen a5 in the variation notes I mentioned about a3. But basically, the idea of queen a5 here is interesting. I think this might be a relevant position for, to actually consider Queen B7 just to try and smash through the center like in Fischer Tau 1959. Fischer was only uh, a youngster, he was only about 16 at the time. Tau, as we know, won that candidate to 59 to play Mikhail Botvinnik the next year, 1960. But this was one of the, the four crushing, one of the most crushing of the four games was from this sort of position, a knight on the rim huge pressure through the center, uh, just leading. But white hasn't castled, that's one benefit here. The the way Tau ripped through the diagonal and G-fold out was just, it was just absolutely uh, crushing. 
I hope some of you are aware of that game on stream. I only video annotated it recently on the King's Crusher YouTube channel. Uh, okay, do I take on e4? Is it too dangerous? That's an interesting question. I think I'm safe. I can't see any objection uh, tactically to taking it. There might be f6 to consider on queen g3. But at the moment, I don't think f6 is entirely destructive. If I castle bishop h6, bishop f6, bishop g7, bishop g7, f6, knight f6, rook f6, that sort of thing, it's scary. I mean, it's possible that I should consider bishop f6 immediately. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not saying this is 100% clear cut. Am I going to get mashed? If I, what about if I just play knight f6? I'm just thinking about the center as well, central control and kicking out the queen, of course. Knight f6, actually queen f7. <laughs> check all checks. You see, I've tried to check all checks. Funny enough, probably I should castle here to defend f7. That would be a little bit embarrassing <laughs> to allow queen f7. Okay, so what's going on here? So knight f6, d5. I'm not sure it's considered training just to go over classic games from the 60s, but I do find it intriguing how, you know, I think learning from the world champions or even when they were younger or against each other is, I think, interesting. I, you, surely you can. That is a valid like, training thing. I think there's even books called Learn from the World Champions. And I mean, the, the examples in middle game books are often from world champion games like Alexander Alakine. I remember there was one classic um, Alakine maneuver I always like remembering the Queen's Gambit against um, Capablanca. This, this middle game book cited Knight B6 to C4, this rerouting, this slow rerouting. I, I use that quite a bit sometimes. Um, okay, so D5 here for D4. There's bishop g5 d4. Am I going to lose control of the central squares? There's something nasty on knight b6 happening. I'm not entirely sure. It's, although I've, I haven't got the same sort of attacking uh, <laughs> pattern as as the cited uh, Fisher Tell game. In fact. I potentially got a loose piece on e4 and d5 is not is a bit shaky. I think I need to support my center a little bit more before d4 because I think yeah it's it's a little bit shaky d5 is d4 possible I think now that e5 is more solid oh hang on there's knight c5 this is dangerous that knight's actually dangerous can I take on a3 just to I like fragmenting pawns a little bit these pawns are a bit fragmented but there's knight c5 there yeah okay that's one time to take, take knight c5 but I'm on that pawn over there I thought that was a distraction okay there's rook d4 trying to bring my pawns together so fragment the opponent's pawns and try and connect your own pawns I think where possible as a, as a general rule a general rule there are various reasons for fragmenting pawns. You're making them weaker, but later, um, even potential things like past pawns, if if it's based on fragmented pawns rather than connected pawns, it's often more challenging tactically. You can, you know, I've, I've noticed some opportunities where I could have fragmented pawns, and sometimes it's just worth taking a pawn just to do that, not just the act of winning a pawn. But uh, here, yeah, they're a bit more fragmented. D3, the back row seems weak after this. D3 seems like a, a good move. I'm tempted just for D3. Maybe I'm, I'm just losing a pawn for nothing. I mean, it could be the case. I, I do wonder, rook D8, the queen goes back. Tactical considerations, bishop F7 all the time. All the forcing moves, the forcing checks, even though they're outrageous, they're worth checking because you get some tactical insight even from checking the more outrageous um, tactical forcing moves 
But here, okay, CD, CD. I mean, there's a problem. Queen C1 doesn't work. Rook F1 or Queen F1. So this is a little bit speculative. I can pick up A3, or I can play Rook D8. And this is more interesting. I think Rook D8, I'm leaving F7 a bit weak. And this one, there's always Bishop F7 picking up my Queen. Oh, Queen C1 I'm on, would, would have been on the Rook. Let's try this. I'm hoping F7 is not a major disaster area at the moment. Okay, now... I'm being cheeky here with Queen D6. There's no Rook D4. I'm threatening Queen F4 and I'm threatening this pawn. So I'm trying to weaken that back row. I think I can safely take this pawn or is there Queen C4? Queen C4, Queen E7. Have I just blundered into something? A bit worrying. It's a bit worrying when there's an unexpected move. Mm. The check. Or Queen D5. There's other checks to be concerned about. Okay. Um. Let's get out of this. Okay. It's a bit scary. It's a bit scary. Yeah, it didn't really help that STEM game I had in mind. The 1959 one. Didn't help that much. Didn't you? The, the details of the position. Thanks for the game, Kremlin student. Um, Okay, so Marty Bishop sixty four. Okay, so uh, hello, Marty Bishop sixty four. That's a cute chess name. Sixty four, sixty four squares on the board. Oh, Smith Mora. Sometimes it's fun. It's one of my more respectable gambits in the repertoire. Anyway, I've got an idea, a recent plan against this, which is actually. A little bit on the nifty side, I think, just to put the knight here before castling, it means that the rook's not in the way. Maybe even I can go for caveman style early on. Uh -huh. So queen d2, which means six. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so Queen D2. I do wonder about this position. Am I am I over exaggerating my attacking potential? It's it's not main line Sicilian defense. Maybe I should plan open Sicilian next game. This is <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is an attacking position. He's, I think he's done the right thing to stop. Harry the H pawn doing the carnage on the H file. And now what exactly do I have to show in terms of attacking Trump cards? To, if I was being honest, I wouldn't say that much at the moment. <laughs> but okay, if I protect B2, I can play for Bishop H6 without losing my entire queen side. So Bishop H6 might be a good idea. Is it worth it? I hope it's worth it. You're always weakening your own dark squares when you take off the opponent's dark square bishop. It's not a one-way street usually. But here it's the defensive Fincetto bishop. You usually look forward to weaknesses around the king, you know, those weakened dark squares. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'll take that off just to try and weaken the opponent's king a little bit. Now queen g5 for knight f5 is interesting. I could try and pile the pressure on. I think it's worth a punt because knight f5 always gives queen h6 or knight e7 potentially. And if takes, then I've got loads of pressure on g6. So that might not be entirely uh, bad to play knight f5 check. But you've got to get into the resources of the position really. It's, it's bad to just waffle. You've got to get into the nitty gritty of the positions. 
forcing moves and stuff even outrageous ones um, but they're not I don't think anything's particularly working at the moment just knight f5 is the main thing I've got an eye on oh there's knight takes h5 here this looks like a good pawn to take f2 is a little bit vulnerable I can't see anything better than knight takes h5 <clears throat> Now if the king goes okay there, alright there's knight f4 or just just knight g3 for h5 just try, try and plow on with h5. I don't think the queen's getting trapped or anything just yet. As long as f2 is protected, okay. Could I just take that? Because I do wonder if knight takes then there's queen h6. That's, that looks interesting, queen h6 just to make sure the king is on G and then a bishop e2 to stop knight g4. As long as my queen isn't getting trapped. I do wonder. With my f pawn pinned, it would be nice potentially to play f4. That's not gonna happen for a while. If we start to look at forcing moves here, knight f5, knight h5, just for tactical potential tactical insights. It's, it's interesting. I mean, knight h5, queen g5, it's not doing too much. Hmm. Oh, taking. <laughs> I can afford just to play h5 or not. Takes, takes knight g4, queen g5. Possible. Hmm. Give it a punt. Just trying to undermine the remaining. Well, those two. There was actually HG to consider there. Okay, the knight's hanging here. So actually, I think there's still significant pressure. Probably I can reroute this knight. Knight d4 to f5. On actually, knight d4 does mean f4 if this f pawn is unpinned so on knight e5 knight d4 i would look forward to f4 um there's also another pawn over here queen e7 is that worth taking yeah, it's tempting i don't know how much counterplay is is given by queen e7 when you take a pawn you've got to worry about the counterplay the downsides I don't know. I don't know. Can't see it. Maybe it's worth taking. <clears throat> F6, maybe H6. Okay, so Knight D4. Actually, H6 looks pretty tempting as a form pawn. One of my favourite attacking ideas, the form pawn. Uh, now, yeah, there's Rook E6 as a temper. Let's just go back here to avoid Rook E6. I guess there's f6 as a tempo or knight f3 threat and that's naughty. <laughs> you got to watch out for the checks. Yeah, knight f3 wins the queen. Naughty, naughty, naughty. I've just got to say, very naughty. How do I get out of it though? <laughs> that's the interesting thing. How do I get out of this? Queen E3? I'm not convinced. Queen H4 might be safer. It holds the H5 pawn, but he wants to take that to lure my queen. Now I'm just dropping the knight. I've got to play something like Queen E3 to take the boxes. I've got to protect the knight. Now this is getting intense. I've got to focus on the resources here. Come on. This is my intense look, by the way. All right, Knight D4, thankfully. Fault, queen and rook. <clears throat> that was a, a naughty trap. I'm pleased not to have fallen right into. That is embarrassing when that happens. Okay. Okay. 
I can simplify, but I don't like my pawn structure. Is it actually worth it? What about queen g3 instead? Queen g5, f3. There's also queen e5 coming up. I think queen g3 is possible here. So I'm keeping a family fork. Okay, he's not threatening mate just yet. Can I afford to take and then f3? And kick this imposter, this knight away. Okay, so rook d1. Let's double here, hopefully without losing a rook. <clears throat> Straight the knight. Knight c4. Thank you very much. Oh, I could have taken on d6. I could have. Hmm. Okay, it's getting scary. There's knight f3 on the cards. Maybe I'll just ignore that. Knight f3, king f2. I don't need to open up everything. I don't need to. Um, try and get rid of some counterplay. Oh, <laughs> I'm a lucky bunny. I've got the lucky bunny ears on. I was getting scared there. I was getting scared. <laughs> I was, I was. You, the clock going down is always pretty scary, I gotta say. If your clock's gone down to less than 30 seconds, it means you've set, if my clock, it means you've set me loads of problems. So, congratulations, you've set me loads of problems and concerns. <laughs> okay, so well played. Always blame the mouse. Yes, I do sometimes blame the mouse. <clears throat> In chess, you know, to set the opponent problems, I think is one of the philosophies. I think I mentioned that of Tal and other players, not just playing, you know, the best scientific move each time, but trying to set the opponent that you've got in front of you, particular problems which they might find psychologically for their profile uncomfortable as well. I think Colson does that as well. And in the past, we had Lasker, who was a bit of a psychologist. And it's interesting with Emmanuel Lasker, from what I've read, and what I've observed, a lot of the time his play is actually extremely accurate when I've actually checked for accuracy. But it's not the simple case of what you'd think of putting opponents into positions that they're not comfortable with. He sometimes deliberately put opponents in positions they were overly excited to have. And so he'd either create like a total over optimism or a total uncomfort the either extremes to get an emotional i think reaction from the opponent to unsettle them uh so it's not i don't think it was a simple case of you know say a tactical player just going for quiet positions i think sometimes you just give them exactly what they want but he was also Laskill was a world champion for quite a long time and i was very very impressed he beat capablanca even when he was like getting on a bit in this last round of was it St. Petersburg tournament. So I'm not entirely sure what tournament, but it was a brilliant Roy Lopez exchange line. He got a knight on e6. So he played Capablanca in what seems to be like end game, you know. But it was a it was just totally winning possession though. But uh, now this is a dragon without the usual opposite side castling. I do wonder. Okay, there's some dangers here, obviously. Uh, but not as terrifying as the main uh, dragons. Um, so bishop e6, queen b6. I'm thinking bishop e6, queen b6. I mean, if white's going to play b3 at some point, okay, there's always f4, f5 to factor in. Can I, I don't know, move like this does seem a bit too, and she just hangs the a6 pawn. How oh, do I move that out of the way? Decisions. 
What about this? That gives bishop b7. That's something better than bishop e6. What's bishop e6 about? Come on, let's get focused on the position here. Bishop b7 holds a6. Important detail. Is e5 destructive or not? I'm not entirely sure it's destructive at this moment. I could be wrong. If f3 is played, white is slightly weakening the dark squares. I do wonder. Knight d7, knight e5, provoke f4 later. What would be the point? I have to ask that. What would be the point of doing that? I think I'm under pressure on this d file. Maybe another plan is just neutralize d6 pressure for a moment. Just simply a rook to d8. Okay, this knight and bishop scenario, I think I'm okay with it. Maybe there's c4 here. Oh, bishop's kind of blocked in by its own pawn. My knight might be useful later. This pawn here is intriguing if that's going to be total weakness or what. Actually, let's just use this rook for a moment. I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> I think my position is pretty solid. I don't think there's any easy targets. Oh, is there? It's pinning my knight. If I just aim to simplify, now I lose e7. Could protect e7 for queen c5 to be possible. Okay, let's dissolve this. Well, as a6 is weak. Hmm. I don't think he's going to play rook c1 in a hurry if I do this, because I think I'm just going to take that. Two rooks for the queen should be okay. If I can just get my pawns. Oh! I'm surprised. I think this is good to get the two rooks. I know in blitz games it's often disastrous to do this, because it's easier to manage the queen. Than two pieces, but this looks so tempting. This I've got a ready-made pin here. Okay, I'll stop this g5 for a moment. Now rook e1 gives some ideas like rook e4, rook g4 immediately, rook e4, and rook c1. Two frets. Okay, rook e4, address one but not the other. If I can take off this pawn, that's king safety. There's also knight d5 if my knight wasn't pinned. I do wonder if I uh, kind of keep the pressure on here with g5. I've fragmented the pawns, which is a good sign. Try and unpin the knight. So something like g5, maybe I'm not entirely sure where the king can really move. Okay, knight e4 is possible. Try and go for some sort of coordination and stuff. My rooks are a bit loose, but with rook f2, it might be worth it. Okay, where does this rook want to go? Maybe just protect it from I don't think f2 is going anywhere. Now he's off the dark squares at the moment. My king's on the dark square. Gotta be concerned about the dark square checks. Hmm, that's a pain. Okay, this could be a big concern, I gotta say. Let's drip that one away. Knight g4 to f6. Uh, it's weakening d6. I'm probably misplaying this. Right, let's not take too long. Um, actually, a little trap here. Rook e5 of queen e7. Okay. Um, knight c5. Got to try and stop his pawns as well now. This is a dangerous running past pawn here. Um.
Mm. Mm. Might be two cheaper. There's a check here. Actually, that takes the bishop, doesn't it? There's a check on b8. Well, there's rook a5. Knight c5. I think it takes my knight stops the pawn. So I want to play knight c5. I think 96 at some point. Oh, I just blundered a rook. Okay, hold on, there's d5 for a moment. Um, okay, uh, with the threat of knight d4 jack. Okay, you can protect the rook. I think the rooks can mow down the king with rook f2 potentially. And rook e1 if I can get a mating net set. Um, I was resigned. Okay, thanks. That was that was tense. Another tense one. Got me down to 53 seconds there. Well played. Okay. Born Alley. Hello, Born Alley. Bit of variety. Let's play uh, like a Trompovsky or something. I, I can play things other than E4, by the way, if you want me to. Um, I can play like Trompovsky was championed by British Game Master uh, Julian Hodgson. It's a very, very interesting, relatively uncharted territory. Um, he he used it to win the British Championship at least three times. The interesting thing about that is also um, he took his own chair in. Can you believe it? He took his own chair to the British Championship. A very comfortable chair, apparently. Well, for him, he took his favourite chair. <laughs> getting, getting, ho taking your home advantage with you. <laughs> taking a home furniture to a tournament <laughs> but also his home opening you know the Trompovsky <laughs> and and he's done books and DVDs of course on Trompovsky I think uh, he went into coaching after that he won it so many times and uh, I had this book by Leonard Barden uh, which captures an era in British chess and it had some very interesting pictures of Nigel Short with Julian Hodgson as, as juniors. And uh, okay, so uh, I think play better chess. It's got some nice photos. I like the, the chess books which have the nice photos. Myself, I, I like that kind of snapshot in time and to see the players and stuff. Uh, but my favourite chess book, I think, it must be the World of Chess by Sadie and Lessing. It's an American biased book they love Fisher of course uh, but it shows all all the kind of different facets of chess it's absolutely I recommend that if you want to get a cultural book about chess the world of chess by Sadie and Lessing I, I recommend it beautiful uh, pictures and stuff one of my favorites is um, a Russian street they've got a gigantic demo board in the street because I think chess was for the people at the time you know they wanted it as the people's game so yeah now I think I've got a load of books on my right and a load of books over there <laughs> I haven't got rid of them yet I'm tempted sometimes oh you know <laughs> do I need them but <laughs> no no that's some really good ones okay so um, g4 g5 looks looks like uh, an idea for an attack Because it seems as though blacks kind of reduce the tension in this this word the tension in the center, which can sometimes give one a, a kind of free hand. But here I, I've got to be careful about the bishop being trapped. I think I'm going to give the bishop a square on b1 against b3, and I want to then that free hand on the king side. It goes hand in hand. If the opponent releases like the tension in the center, 
you can sometimes get that free hand and it sometimes happens in, in things like more often than not in things like the French defense the structures because it's all about pawn chains and stuff so I'm hoping it's kind of a race between queenside destruction and if I get my attack in here on the king side <clears throat> that's a tactical liability rook a2 because bishop h7 though checking the checks as I say can I just tell you that it's an ambition it's not really it's something you should do <laughs> if you're really awake and up to the challenge check all the checks all the time uh, so king g2 rook h1 uh, and maybe g4 g4 coming up I think maybe I could double I think one of the most beautiful games I remember observing of Michael Adams was when he it was in a closed position like this he was just simply piling up the pressure for a strategic pawn break and I find that a beautiful kind of form of chess to witness where there's like a beautiful clear strategic plan okay knight b3 is threatened <clears throat> and oh yeah I'm on the fire here <clears throat> what do I do about knight b3 for god's sake <laughs> ah or c3 is dropping hmm, this is nice <laughs> oh no I gotta get out of here how oh, exactly how do I lose c3 do I sack c3 I'm, like, I'm gonna have to sack c3 it's it's radical measures are needed I'm gonna have to sack c3 and just play for g4 I'm hoping I'm hoping not to get completely murdered here uh, he's not letting me do this that easily okay okay I thought he might take on c3 Okay, the knight's holding c2, which is, means knight e3 is not immediately winning a piece. That's the good news. Queen e2 might be possible. No. c3. This looks bad. This looks bad, bad, bad. I'm getting into a total mess. two rooks for the queen doesn't look entirely promising queen until I get my queen chat mated how did I get into this bishop b1 <laughs> is that a move bishop b1 I'm actually just losing immediately to knight a3 crikey I think this is the case of two rooks for the queen and hoping for the best. Yes, this is all gone pear shaped. It's all gone pear shaped. Knight c3 is going to drop. I'll try and get my rooks over the queen side and play for something like. Put things on ice on the king side, I think. Rook h1, rook g1. It was going, I thought, well earlier. <laughs> um. Mm. Think. Right, I'm going to put my thinking expression out, deep thinking expression. Bishop g6. Rook a6 to b6 for rook b7. Try and coordinate the rooks here. This queenside invasion was pretty successful. Let's get a move on, whatever I do. Okay, rook b2. Can't double the rooks anywhere, can I? Can I? I can't double the rooks. Ouch. It's getting worse. Can I get g4 in? End up losing material. I'm gonna play g4 here. I'm gonna lose the bishop, queen b2. Can't do that. Try for knight f6, rook h7. 
some sort of vague hope of an attack. Knight's protecting f2. Alright, so bishop e one's possible. Knight f6, rook h7, check, it's not mating or anything. Can I take that and move the knight? I think c3, unfortunately. I'm overloaded. I'm well overloaded. c3 coming up. Okay, is there knight f6 possible? Bishop c2, I'll play knight f6 and hope for the best. Try and get a form form there. I cannot do this. Um, I have to give up the bishop. Hoping for a swindle here. Of some sort. I just need a minute to get over this game. I need a minute of recovery. <laughs> this is my recovery look. Oh my god. Thank you. It is my birthday. Thank you for letting me have a bit of a chance after. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> that queen side, I didn't think that queen side attack was that dangerous until C3 was, uh, until he was winning my queen by force, C3 was coming. It was totally unhinged, the position. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Crikey. Kinnan. <laughs> Try knight c6 French. A little surprise weapon from John Watson's Dangerous Weapons in the French book. Which may have been written for a laugh and he may be <laughs> I don't know, but I know some of them are interesting. But his first book on the French is the classic. John Watson. The first book he did. Classic. That's D five square. Doesn't really want to give up the light square bishop, does he? Right, so knight D four is actually threatened. I got a nice blockade square on D five. Mm, I wonder if F five is worth it. Maybe G file. Maybe something like Rook F7 G7 Arthur. Or King H8 Rook G8 might not be that terrible if I'm not getting mated. And Queen D5 is interesting. Bishop D3, Queen H5. Can I think this bishop? Bishop might be a tactical ability. Okay, so a three, huh? So queen d five, queen h five, and rook g seven after. So bishop d three, queen h five, bishop moves rook g seven, threatening nothing. But okay, <coughs> I play it anyway. Um, kick this bishop out of here. 
Hang on, there's a nasty tactic, isn't there? If I play Korea, if I don't tell me he's got 95. Oh my god. Does that really exist? Do I need to be concerned about that? Because if it takes knight f7, if it takes knight f7, I mean it does exist. Unfortunately, I think I could deny it exists, but I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to take the risk of it being played. In which case, queen f5, bishop d3, queen g4 is not that. Let's put the queen back. I don't know. Knight e5 looks dangerous to me. I don't know. I'm doing a safe method, I hope, over here. <clears throat> Bishop d6, Bishop d7, Queen g4, Rook g8, that sort of thing without allowing potential massive gigantic tactics, which just seem to be absolutely crushing. Uh, if knight d5 to keep a block, it takes when it's a c form. I don't know about this d5. This is dangerous for e8. Mm. It can win a pawn. Okay, I'm getting run over here, it seems. Um, can I get some respite if I just give this pawn up? So, bishop d6. Bishop d7, got a nice blockade for the pawn sack. And push back. Don't like this. The knight's holding up c7. Can I get to arrange my pieces basically with queen a battery? A battery would be nice. Bishop d7, queen g6, rook g8, battery on g2. <clears throat> Is it too much to ask? I don't know. Queen g6, rook g8. I have to look at this after for that 95 tactic, maybe at this time. Um, if I just imagined that. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, what, what, what? Cover f5 for a moment. This was a queen b1. Um, queen one, queen b2. Try and break this down for rook b1, bishop d6. This rook e8 is always dangerous if I leave the back row. Can I not just take this? I'll play for bishop d6 to pin that knight. Oh my god! Alright, <clears throat> it's happened. A major tactic has happened. Um, I think if I can play for b3 after this. Play for b3. That would be a nice pass pawn. B2 dangerous? Knight of five is B2 dangerous enough, maybe the question. B2, knight seven, queen. He's got things like knight g6, maybe just tank. B2, rook b2. 
26. Rook e7. Rook e7, unfortunately. Uh, rook e2. Okay. There's knight f4 here. There's rook e7. Right, bishop d6 first. So I might be threatening. Holding e8 might be threatening rook b2. Okay, rook g8. Trying to get coordination, if nothing else, on g3. Something like queen g6 is on g3. Queen h5 is not possible. f5, there's queen d5. Knight c3 on the other hand, trying to get the queen away from there. From the rook. That's not happening, is that? Knight e2, okay. Bishop e7. I think I want something like. Two passive resources. I need some resources here. Um, 95. Try and protect F6, Bishop B2, 95. Rook f8, queen d5, play c6 first. Is the queen g7 the end of this or not? You guys are being very friendly today. Let me win by <laughs> two seconds. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. Yes. <laughs> well played. <laughs> you gave me uh, a. Uh, you're better in the final position, basically. I was saved by the bell. Hmm, crikey. <laughs> Fenomen. Fenomen. Ah. <laughs> that, that was good. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the continual pressure. <laughs> yeah, we're one mistake slate face. I love that. I, I love, I feed on that. <laughs> love it it makes you feel alive to feel that pressure all the time it makes you feel alive Guys, <laughs> killing me today. <laughs> Am I lucky, Bunny? Today I didn't even go to Cafe Nero. Actually, I'm just using Kenko, just multiple Kenko, just standard Kenko dark coffee today. Ah. Uh. <laughs> OK, 
okay, I want a blockade because uh, they're reassuring to have blockades to make sure your opponent is under lock and key of the blockade. Uh, so is it entirely great lock blockade? I don't know. In fact, wasn't my poor five hanging let's get back to reality <laughs> i need to get back to reality here yeah. my pawn might have been hanging there yeah <clears throat> is 95 possible back to the nitty gritty the grindstone of <clears throat> trying to find resources and stuff my focus look Okay, so B6 is a little bit vulnerable. C2 is vulnerable. Queen C7, example. C3. Just C3. Just just to say, I want to torture B6 soon. Or play Rook D7. In fact, A6 is hanging as well. Potentially. Might not be worth it. Rook A8. On the other hand here, Queen A6 is almost like tempting. If there's nothing else to do, it fragments pawns. <laughs> As I mentioned, if you can take a pawn and it fragments, maybe it's worth taking it. So b6 is more vulnerable. Okay, so b6 is vulnerable. Yes, I'm unlucky bunny today, I must admit, at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, can I play rook d8? There's a check there to examine rook d8 to deflect the queen. The queen protection, bishop f8. I think, yeah, rook d8 looks strong. We're just taking for rook d8 and get the same thing. No, I don't get the same thing. I get a rook. <laughs> rook d8, bishop f8, queen c8 is different. I get a whole rook. There's no checks. Check all the checks. See, this is my advice. Check all the checks. There's a killer one here. If I take this, I'm not winning a rook. I'm winning a pawn, but you know. So rook d8 looks looks good. Do you see that? Bishop f8. Just take on c8. The nickname reminds me of Feynman. There's a fantastic YouTube video by Feynman on chess. You should check it out. He's a fantastic scientist. And um, he talks about how, like in chess, you have these like, like theories of the universe and try and, and sort of unify them all the time. And um, okay, so Queen takes C8. Um, it's a brilliant one. Check it out. Find them on chess. Okay, so rook f8 now. I've taken on a whole rook. Um, <clears throat> all right, so there's rook f8, king g7. Okay, I'm threatening to have mates. This is a downside. Rook g8, king h6. It's with h3. Okay, this could be embarrassing if I get mated. I wonder bishop f2 might be okay if my rook was still on d8, because otherwise it's queen d1 mating. So bishop f2 might be a good safety thing here while the rook's there. As long as no d1 or e1 check. So bishop f2. Hmm. I'm hoping I'm not getting mated. Let's double check this <clears throat> double check this <laughs> okay um it'd be nice to have a move like h3 to safeguard against such disasters the bishop okay he can move the king to lure my rook away for queen d1 to be mate this is a snag uh, i have to be content with until i've got 
<clears throat> try and consolidate this position without trying to just grab even more material. So he's got queen d1. If I take on f8, and then queen e1 is mating. If I just let him, his bishop, live another day. Okay, I can take this and now play h3. I'm afraid he's checking as well. But fundamentally, I'm going to play h3. Now, the check here, I think I've got bishop g3 eventually. So, check, check, bishop g3. <clears throat> Sorry, was it fight Feynman? No, I thought it was fine Feynman. Sorry, I, I, if you know the exact spelling of that scientist, please let me know. And I'll, I'll read it out. Um, so queen d1, queen c1, king h2. Queen f8 check. Okay, this is a position I kind of wanted. I a position I'm not getting mated to something really excruciatingly embarrassing. So that helps. Okay. <clears throat> um, so we check and rook h8 coming up. Do I get time? It's not following the check soon. This one, I'll just follow, simply follow the checks here. Because I think they will lead to something Queen H4. Okay, so uh, yeah, sometimes you can just follow the checks without necessarily calculating the final king destination. Sometimes it's better in Blitz to do that, actually. I've noticed. Thanks for the game, Fenneman. Okay, so Van Nat. Okay, let's spice things up with Nimzo Larson attack. So this is from Nimzvich and Bent Larson, the Great Dane. He was one of the best Western players in the 60s, 70s, I think. Um, we played um, top board in uh, USSR versus the rest of the world match, 1970. Unfortunately, he had a horrific loss to Boris Spassky in one of the uh, B3 games, which kind of put people off B3 because uh, it was kind of horrific, that game. Um, but anyway, okay, so C3. So play for E4. Is E4 actually worth playing? I'm not even convinced though. It's going to end up with a nice day queen's pawn. It looks a bit pointless to do this. <sighs> uh, I don't know. In the absence of I have no other plans, they sometimes say a bad plan is better than no plan, but I do wonder about that. You've got to be cynical about that. Maybe sometimes no plan is better because you don't weaken pawns, etc. Craig, I say queen's pawns. So I'm not entirely sure about this. I guess there's some dynamic pressure on b7. If he's going to take, I've got pressure on b7. I don't always enjoy playing with the isolated queen's pawn. It looks kind of solid at the moment here, black's position. Is c4 okay? I'm dropping that center pawn, so why not just play for c4 without dropping the pawn for a moment or d5? Actually, d5, I don't know, d5, 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 e, d, not f6, d6. Possible, it's possible, d5. No, c4, and I'm not pinning my own d pawn. Maybe c4. Try and get this pin. Um, so b2 is loose. Um, there's also bishop a3, maybe, just to unpin. And especially d4. 
There's rook a4 here. That might be important here. Yeah. <clears throat> Get this guy out of the way. We'll protect it. It's protected by the queen. A6, some fragment taken well. Is that a weakness? Is it exploitable? I sometimes you try and measure weaknesses. Are they actually exploitable or not? Okay, the bishop is loose. You shouldn't really have loose pieces if you can help it. But I can't see an immediate way of winning that loose piece. Okay, so bishop b1. Let's not lose anymore. I want to play h5, h6. There are weakened dark squares around here. So I want to sort of try and tap into that. So I get to play h6. Oh, there's a pin for a moment. Okay, it's not an absolute pin, you can play 95, but relative pin. But um, I'm hoping that's not entirely useful. All right, so 95, there's queen f6. No. Got my form pawn. The back row is a bit more vulnerable because of that form pawn. Actually, if the rook moves up, taking it on c6, then rook d8 to follow will be checkmate. So it's immediately starting to fill. Like there's some tactical opportunities there with that form pawn. T H O R N, not F A W N. And Jessica Fisher Queen has a playlist based on King's Crush's form pawns if you want to check it out. <laughs> okay. Isn't Rook take C6 on here? It's just left that. It's a trade off move. Trade off, like cool. He's attacking that, but the expense of that is not ideal. Can I just take on c6? I can't see a crushing tactic or anything. Queen c6 is not working because he's actually covering d8 here. So rook c6 looks as though it's worth it. Someone really got me thinking. I couldn't reply to them on YouTube recently. They said about one of my Blitz games recently about both of us, me and my FM opponent, missed this pawn hanging because he plays me like 95. And I thought, hang on, has he got a point or should we be like on a hawk as a hawk on the weaknesses of the opponent's last moves? And I thought, well, actually, in reality, especially during blitz game you want to have a plan usually so you can play moves fairly quickly so i think it's easy to miss stuff like that because you've got your preconceived plan this even happens to me in long games you've got a preconceived plan so you're not really on the lookout for the opponent sort of blundering um but obviously it's very useful to be on that lookout uh, and but you've got to put your own like plan aside and also you've got to put aside any potential dangers the opponent's move seems to have and then you can start looking at the weakness of the opponent's move so i wouldn't say it's you know obvious in blitz when the opponent like makes a mistake um okay thanks thanks for the game fun and that um i mean that's actually one of my favorite things to talk about uh, conceptually I found and it came from a Maurice Ashley high chess chessy thing he did a video called the secret of chess it's a great great label for a video the secret of chess or something it was essentially like weaknesses of the last move how you can go and review a lot of classic like master games and I think an impression was given at the time or in books quite often that the classic master games are these very deep long-term plans but he's finding like improvements in the games if you're a little bit more 
just looking for the opportunities on a move to move basis often reveals a great deal about missed opportunities in, in these games. Um, so anyway, knight d6, knight f7 is, is my plan, I think, for trying to break through the center. And if the pieces are still there, it's going to win a piece with e4. So knight d6, knight f7, which also helps hold g5. Okay, but he's breaking that plan. Can I play e5 now instead? He's always going to have bishop g5. This could be dangerous. Hmm. Bishop g5, queen d6, ed, queen d5. Something nasty there. So with bishop c4, I can take on c4. Bishop g6, I'm going to take the queen. Queen d6. Hmm. I think queen d6 is plausible. I hope it's plausible. This this diagonal bugs me. It's actually bugging me now. This diagonal. <sighs> so queen e five, queen e two, bishop e six. It's not. It's not an immediate. I don't think it's an immediate disaster. But I don't like it. Bishop e6. I've got an isolated pawn as well. I think he's got the trump cards here. It's up against bishop c4. I wonder if knight d6 actually. Okay, knight d6 here. Trying to keep a grip on things. c4, queen c5, bishop e3, queen b4. I'm hoping I'm not losing my queen, basically, to c4. Might be threatening e4. That could be the threat here for me. But let's have a look at this again. c4, queen, c5. On bishop e3, maybe there's knight d4. Is that losing a piece? Could be to bishop d4 and queen e6. So maybe I might be forced to play something else. Queen b4. Okay. I can play e4 here. Actually, the bishops attacked as well. So if the rook moves, I take the hair, taking the uh, queen next. If the knight moves, I'm taking on g5. Oh, I didn't see that. Dangerous. Queen f5. There's knight h4. There's all sorts of weird and wonderful things there. Okay, I'll play queen f5. There's knight h4 for bishop e6. If queen g5, bishop e6. Okay, so I'm going for that. I'm letting this bishop off though. I find we've traded some issues <laughs> with each other, I think. I've, I feel less pain on the diagonal for that bishop gone. And also I can support this pawn. Right, so knight e5 to d3 might be possible. Knight d3, is that actually plausible? I think something like f3 and h3 look vulnerable. Maybe knight f5 to h4 to f3. I don't want to drop e4 in a hurry. <clears throat> knight d3 might be viable actually. c5, knight f5. I think knight e4, queen e4. Yeah, I think c5, knight f5. c5, knight f5. So if knight e4, queen e4. Okay, so e4 is like vulnerable, but is there knight h4 here? I'm looking at f3 now, checking all checks. I uh, might also consider rook f3. Mm. Speculative at the moment. Rook f5. 
Doubling rooks might be good. So double rooks on f2. On any knight e4, not any is a queen e4, there's queen c4. Bit of trivia. Okay, so if I double rooks. Mm, okay. D4 is a bit vulnerable. I don't think knight e4 is happening here. Does he go back for the d4 square? Can I play knight d4 and just get intense pressure on f2? I like the pressure on f2 here. If I can double rooks, I've got knight, bishop, two rooks, all on f2. That looks pretty tasty. Although e4 drops, not entirely tasty. Knight f4 here for e3. Uh, E3's got block with knight, he's got knight E3 on, on that. I'm trying to keep the queens on with rook F5, H5, try and keep the attack. Or not bother. I think he might have compromised his king slightly. I think I can go for a, a sort of mate with rook and knight, potentially. And there's bishop F2 here. So there's knight g3 now, friend. But that sort of mate with rook and knight is interesting, like, you know, rook h5 mating. <clears throat> I think for the moment, just knight g3 is simple and strong. Take the exchange and play e3, it's simple and strong. Simple chess. Sometimes it's worth just playing simple chess without playing the lottery of loads of tactics all the time. I think just taking an e2 is fairly clear cut. Okay, thanks for the game. Jesse, yeah, I think taking an e2. Okay. The dark horde. Okay. Hello. <clears throat> Pardon me. Try and go away from. Has it bought this? I don't think it's ready. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Oh, I'm gonna have to decline from non premium. I keep doing that every session. It's the decline of non. You have to be a premium member, guys. By the way, also remember, please, uh, likes are really appreciated. If you like the video, I really appreciate it. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like so really appreciate <clears throat> okay so uh, it's it's good for the virality of youtube videos on on all our channels king's cross channel chess 24 if uh you can you can like the videos okay so rainbow chess i'm gonna accept from rainbow chess oh got the doorbell going okay i hope someone else will answer the doorbell Oh, my brother might be going to answer. I hope we got a fantastic new doorbell system, um, <clears throat> which is actually from Amazon. If you've got um, problems <coughs> hearing your doorbell, you can get something from Amazon, which um, you basically plug into the wall sockets uh, of, and it's connected to those and that makes the sound quite good. Um, new system we put in recently. Um, okay, so uh, knight g4. And knight h4. This looks like, I'm hoping it's a, it's a reasonable. Thank you, yes, it's my birthday today. It's going well today, thank you guys. You're letting me beat you all. You're very nice, very generous. <laughs> so many of you are so generous today. <laughs> Although you gave the impression as though you were gonna beat me, some of you, because I only had like two seconds left in some of the games. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> 
okay so I'm, I'm not really threatening anything in particular but it's always nice to like provoke weaknesses if nothing else well as a general you know all this is like general like rule to provoke weaknesses sometimes it's not that advantageous but here by provoking h3 i mean you can see that the dark squares are slightly weakened h3 might be a tactical target later if i ever got a queen uh to h4 for example I'll take with. Do I accept double pawns? Maybe, maybe. Possibly. Let's keep that pin on c3 for a moment. Maybe g5, g4 as well. We'll create another pin here. If I got to play g5, g4. Uh. Hmm. Intriguing. Uh, went to the cinema last night there's a good film on war dogs 7.4 i don't know if you like me you check on imdb for the rating anything over seven is usually reassuring <laughs> one of my friends is extremely hypercritical and needs other sources like metacritic and stuff before he can watch any film i just like my imdb ratings i keep it simple an imdb rating of over seven is often good enough for me it's, if you just check out the plot after the story if it's reasonably interesting intriguing you know you might find certain aspects of the film interesting <clears throat> okay so queen e7 let's unpin this d pawn rook d8 unlike my bishops they're sort of hyper modern looking in complimentary hmm it's got a point can i afford to take that or should i i think so hang on let's rook d7 <clears throat> I'm going to take on b2 first, safer, and take, what's that weak c-pawn? Get the file first, d2, maybe I take and rook d8, try and just keep the center file. Though at the moment, mm, pawn structure is not entirely symmetrical. I'm wondering about queen f6, it's on f3 and on a1 to keep control of the d file queen d6 to stop rook d1 hmm. yeah I think i'll go for that okay so what's going on here <clears throat> I'm not sure I've got a great plan or anything at the moment. Just 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 have authority over that farm, and it might might be useful. But I don't know exactly how at the moment. I want to preserve the bishop for the right opportunity. Um, doesn't look as though there's much going on actually, but I am getting significant clock advantage in practical terms. It's going to be harder later with just a few seconds to play positions. Uh, so yeah I've got a big time advantage I don't know if okay is a5 possible just locking down I mean these are fixed targets potentially bishop c6 is a fixed target bishop c6 rook b6 bishop f3 hitting the rook Rook these things. Unfortunately, this is always check. It's not working as a trap. There's no need to go for a trap here anyway. Just bishop a6 for the moment. A5 
I think. Bit of pressure. Hmm. So Queen C6. Well, I think I don't mind this trade. Or should I? I don't know. Covering a6, so I'll cover c6 as well. Ah, oh, it's covering a6. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's uh, go on to the next change. Thanks for the game, Rainbow Chess. Uh, chess player, get rid of the challenges from. Okay. Um, it's ten past two actually. Uh, how long have we been going? I think I better go uh, soon after this game. I think I might make this the last game, guys, because um, didn't we start at twelve thirty? It's like yeah, it's been been a while. Um, and I think yeah. Might make this the last game. Uh, so chess player 007, is that James Bond? 007. If you want to try and catch me next week on challenges, be try and get your challenge in early uh, I'm usually here half an hour before so around 12 o'clock I'm usually in the lobby at around 12 o'clock if you want to send challenges and I work through them in in order of when the challenge was sent uh, okay <clears throat> I'll play for I think I'm playing for e6 Although f5 looks very dangerous. Hold on, hold on. Am I misplaying this? Because if I take, I don't know, f5, I can take back with a pawn, I suppose. Give it a punt. I'm trying to break up the center, but I'm just concerned about d6. Hmm. Playing knight e5 here, maybe. text d6 um <clears throat> okay so what's happening here um happening here I wonder it's given up the e5 square as long as there's no f6 this might be okay for me if I can take on d5 now if he takes with the c port I might be able to play b5 take him on the e pawn no that would be more solid maybe all right I can I'm ready to collect on e6 I'm ready for bishop h6 as well here Maybe I shouldn't be bothered about that because it's got some weak dark squares to look forward to on bishop e5, I think. Now rook f1, bishop e3 doesn't do anything. Easy, I'm giving that e4 square. I'm not so convinced. So what about for the moment just this? He's actually killed my bishop on a8 at the moment. What do I do with this bishop on a8? I play queen takes e5 here. It's a tempo gainer, knight f3. 
Take with the pawn, it looks a bit wretched actually. Mm. Mm, maybe the lesser evil is to take with the queen. Possibly. I'm not entirely sure. This, I don't like this bishop on a8. <clears throat> Can I reroute it? Can I play b5 though? Take things. Can I reroute it? I'm not entirely sure what to do with that guy. Um. Okay. Now this and queen d6 is threatened. If I play e5, is that entirely terrible? Ah, I don't want to give up squares. I'm going to play this. Try and reroute the bishop or play b5. If I can either reroute the bishop. I'm not sure if there's no way into e6 at the moment that's good news okay so bishop f4 is g3 can I protect Still got this problem, Bishop. But I'm happier on the dark squares actually, somehow. Maybe Bishop d7 is more flexible than b5. There's also Queen f4 to look forward to. Okay, the Queen's coming off. Should I accept that? This ending has got any prospects for me at all. I wouldn't have thought it's entirely convincing. Let's leave the queens on for a moment because <laughs> my opponent is keen to get them off. Uh, maybe he's strong <laughs> when the queens are off. Maybe he's panicky when the queens are on. Or something. There's a psychological reason for him wanting the queens off. And people in the Hearts League do that as well. They want to trade everything off, especially the queens. <laughs> so let's try and stop that. Oh no, he's trying to trade everything off. I'm with him now. He's trying to trade everything off. He's got a space advantage. That ending could be bad for me. He's not going to accept double pawns here though, is he? With queen g4. I'm stopping queen g4. That means knight h5 to f4 could come useful. How is this ending? Potentially it's bad a5 and knight a4 or something. I'm not entirely sure, but you'd think there might be some danger having a bit of a squished position in the ending. Maybe it's not entirely bad. G3 does like knight h3. Maybe this is not so bad. G5, although knight g3 to f5. I've got to be kidding, haven't I? That looks terrible. Do I allow knight g3 to f5? I don't think so. Oh, gold. I'm going to have to play for b5. He's going to lock down b5. He's going to do that on knight e2. He locks down b5. So I play b5 immediately. No, I don't like that. I don't like this. Can I keep the tension? I can't keep the tension of this game going. Everything's <laughs> coming off. There is B5 here. Hold on a sec. No, I'm, I'm going to play B5. I'm gonna, B5 is a structural attack. I'm going to ask him some questions about his pawn structure here. Although he's got that A file. Queen f4 threatened. A file. Infiltration, queen a2 friend. I'm going to keep up the threats. Because I'm ruthless. I'm like that. I'm ruthless. I'll try and keep up the threats. <clears throat> okay, queen d4 for queen e4. He's not breaking just yet. 
So holding everything together, Queen G2. Oh, that looks too dangerous to play. That's Queen E4. Okay. This looks good for H4. Can I not just get the queens off? I'll keep the queens on again, just in case. Um, it's a protected past pawn. Surely that's 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 good enough. A protected past pawn in the ending. Okay. <sighs> Thank you guys. You've all been very generous to me on my birthday. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, if you could like the video, that would be an extra present. If you like the YouTube video, that would be fantastically appreciated. Okay, so uh, thanks very much. And if you come to the lobby, I'm usually here half an hour early before 12, about 12 p.m. Sorry, before 12.30 p.m. I'll be here in the lobby, accepting challenges on the first come, first serve. Hope you got some useful tips and stuff from this and trivia and interest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming, etc. Okay. See you next week. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated on YouTube. Thanks so much.